Good morning, Ross. Welcome. Thank you for joining me this morning and for uh, participating in the issue of, of the Defunct Lifestyle magazine. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks for having us. It's such a pleasure. Um, Ross, I see you have your uniform on this morning. Yep, wearing it loud and proud. Nice, bright <laughs> yellow. So, yeah, every opportunity we can to put these on, we do. Yes, good stuff. So, Ross, you are a volunteer at, a, at Volunteer Wildfire Services based in Cape Town. Yeah. Um, would you mind sharing with, with our, our listeners a little bit about what, what uh, Volunteer Wildlife uh, uh, services are all about? Sure. So Volunteer Wildfire Services, or VWS as we know, is a non-profit organization, which is, we don't get any funding from the government or any kind of um, governmental departments. Mm. Ultimately, what we do is we are a volunteer fire service that supports various partners across the Western Cape, um, only in wildland fires. So we, we don't touch anything residential. We don't go to houses. Um, we do protect structural properties if it's in the wildlands, but generally we fight wildfires. And what that means is, you know, farmers, farms get into trouble, fires come up, fires come up in the nature reserves, and, and we go out and we support those partners. So we, we partnered up with various partners around the Western Cape, um, Cape Nature being one of them, um, the Overberg uh, municipality. So we, we get called out when, when they need additional hands and additional support. But the, the thing is with the VWS is that we are completely volunteer based. So no one, no one gets paid within our organization. Um, and we have a very extensive training season. We recruit every single year to get new recruits and new people into into the service in various roles so not everyone wants to be a firefighter but we yeah. have various roles that you know we've got the behind the scenes which are logistics which is incident command which is the support teams for the for the active firefighters on the line we then have driver roles um, and what the driver does is they're responsible for the safety of the the firefighters and the crew getting to the fire and back from the fire and they're also pivotal within the fire um, arena while we're busy fighting fires they act as lookouts and watchouts to to protect yes. the firefighters on the line and then of course you get you get the firefighters the guys that actually go into the fires yeah. um, fight the fires it's not all glamour um, yeah. we're not always fighting massive flames and massive fires mm. we a lot of the time we are used for what you call mop up which means we come in behind and we actually make sure that the fires don't flare up again. It's dirty okay. work, it's long work, it's hard work. We do get a lot of fires that we're actively involved in and you know, we're beating with we beating with our our rakos and our beaters. Yes. We we fight fires a lot in the mountains, so we don't have access to vehicles and water a lot. So yeah. We actually hike into the fires. Wow. We take our equipment with us. We then fight the fires oh. on the mountain, and then we have to hike back out again. So it's it's that is not insane. Glamour. No, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, I can imagine. So that, that, yeah, and that, and that's part of the training. So every time we get called up and we go out to a fire, we're obviously wearing our our equipment and our kits. Mm. But most importantly, we have to take our packs with us and our packs have to sustain wow. us for 24 hours. So that includes all our water and hydration methods, yes. all of our, our warm weather kits, our cold weather kits. We then carry all of our equipment with us. Sometimes we hike 10 kilometers just to get mm. to the fire. Then we spend eight to 12 hours fighting the fire and then have to hike back out. So it, it is long hours. Yeah. Um, and that, and that just shows the dedication of the, the teams that we have, you know. It's a purely volunteer thing. And the guys are out there whenever there's a call. Yes. You know, the call out from Met, the team, the team stands up and they, they come out and, and go and fight the fire. And Ross, you know, that – sorry, I interrupted you. That is – Wow, that is that is that is so inspirational and so brave and so courageous. And I think what 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 intrigued me about your team specifically 
at VWS is um, when you mentioned it's it's all all types and kinds of people from students to um, um, normal people you know people that have normal day to day jobs um, executives of companies it's like you have like a whole array of different types of people that get involved as as volunteers. Yeah, and, that, and that's the nice thing because it, it's very diverse. So, yes, we've got students that are studying at the various universities, so they've got time on their hands. But we have, we have accountants, we have doctors, we have CEOs of companies, we have salespeople, we have marketing people, um, we have retirees, people who are wow. actually retired, and this and this keeps them busy, active, and and fit. Um, the interesting thing with VWS is we have a lot of female firefighters within our, within our teams. Yes. Um, globally, globally the, the ratio from male to female is about 85% male, 15% or I think it actually might be closer to 12% female firefighters. That's yes. the international yes. ratio and standard. But at VWS, we've got close to 42% female firefighters and female members. So it's, you know, it's, it's quite encouraging to see that. And every year we're getting new recruits coming in and there's a lot of ladies. And that, that helps, you know, it helps with, the, with, our, with our organization. Um, but the nice thing is having all those diverse people, we've always got something to talk about. There's always, you know, <laughs> we're learning something new every single time. You know, we've got guys that are mechanics and then you've got guys that are brewing beer and then you've got guys that are accountants and then a guy who's yes. a, a medical doctor at an emergency ward. So it's, it's quite nice to experience that. But when everyone puts a uniform on and we get there, we are all mm. firefighters, we're all part of VWS. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's quite encouraging and comforting for us as firefighters going out there because we've all had the same training. Mm. Um, and that's very important. So every single year we recruit new people. We put out the call, people come. And then we have a series. It's about six-month training program that we mm. put everyone through. And that goes everything from orientation to fitness hikes to scenarios out in the field to written exams, um, theory work. Mm. And that, that's for the new recruits. But at the same time, every firefighter like myself, I'm qualified, but I have to go through the same training again every yes. single year in order to retain my badge of firefighter and to go out into the field. I must do the same hikes, I must do the same scenarios, and I have to do evaluations every single year again. Mm -hmm. So keeping the training up and fresh in everyone's minds is, is very, very important. You know what, as, I, I joined... We... Sorry, I was Ross. Just gonna... <laughs> the, the, the training is so intense because, you know, we put safety first over everything. Yes. Um, and that, that's very important for us. Definitely. And you know what it's quite interesting and i'm so appreciative of having this discussion with you because i've actually never had a one-on-one -on -one chat with a firefighter before in my life and i think a lot of people um maybe it's just me but i think a lot of people out there don't really really understand what goes on behind the scenes um you know people just think it's it's a bunch of guys and girls in their yellow suits that jump into the fire and extinguish it and i think it's so much more than that and so much more intense than that so today has really really been very insightful for myself um and i think from from myself and from the defunct tribe well done i think um vws is really and every single member and, and team member can be so proud of of what you are achieving um, and i would love 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 for more of our readers and for more of our sponsors and our corporates and our advertisers to get involved with with your with your with your company and tell me a bit more about how people can get involved what can people do to help yeah that's a good question because because we're western cape based a lot of people and, and we're, not, we're not in the forefront of a lot of people's minds. You know, we, we're in there in the background and we help in the communities and slogging long hours, long days. But like I said in the beginning, we, we're not government funded. So we don't get handed a wad of cash at the beginning of every year to do that. So everything that we do costs money. When we recruit new people into VWS to train them up as either a driver, logistics, support, firefighter, it costs each 
the cost of EWS roughly about 6,500 Rand per person to train them. Now, that is provided that they actually pass. If they, if they don't pass the evaluations, it still costs us money to, in order to train them. Yeah. It then costs money for the VWS to give them, each person, their PPE, the helmets, the boots, the, the firefighting equipment. So for a qualified firefighter to go from training on day one to qualified with all their PPE is roughly about 10,000 Rand per person. Wow. Yeah. Okay, now that is fully, fully funded by the VWS. Um, and we don't get government grants or anything. So what we rely on is donations from people. And there's three ways that people can support us. One is to donate to the fund, which is you know, fully set up as, as an NPO and a PVO, public, a public um, organization. Mm. Um, they can join us, join us as a recruit, join us as an active member yes. in whatever capacity that they want. And obviously, we have an online shop where they can shop for goods and donation, you know, part of that money goes into the VWS. So that, you know, we, we do get funding, but we don't have enough funding. Yeah. Um, vehicles are, are the biggest expense that we have within the VWS, getting, you know, keeping our vehicles up to date. We've got Land Rovers that are, you know, 20 years old that we're still yeah. repurposing and trying to, trying to keep going on the road so funding for us is is the biggest mm. is the biggest um shortfall and downfall so you know that that they can either get hold of hold of me um they can go on to our um web page which is vws.org.za mm. there is a support us page in there where all the links and the clicks in there if they wish to donate they can do it directly through there um our shop is on there our online shop is there and then obviously all the information regarding joining us is on there as well Ross, amazing. Thank you. And thank you for the chat today. I, I'm, I'm inspired now, not, not to go and fight fires with you, but definitely to get the word out about the amazing, absolutely brave work that, that you and, and all the other members are doing, all the other volunteers. Wow. I take my hats off to you guys. And um, it was really such an honor. Thank you, Ross. I really appreciate it. Good luck. And um, I'm really, really excited about this feature and this issue of this magazine. It's, I, I really hope that there's a whole bunch of people that are going to jump on board and really, really support your, your initiative. It's amazing. Thank you for all your hard work. Thanks, Leanne. And yeah, I appreciate the time you've given us. And when you are down in Cape Town, come and join us for a day. Come put on the equipment. Let's see, let's see how you fare. That'll you be amazing. I look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Roz. Speak to you soon. Good luck. Thanks, Leanne. Cheers. Bye. Bye.